So today I'm sat in a churchyard of St. Thomas's Church in East Shefford, Berkshire. I'm in the Lambourne Valley, which is a really beautiful part of the North Wessex Downs. Now I've just come back from holiday and I went to Dorset and along the way I took with me a book called Jude the Obscure. Jude the Obscure was the last book Thomas Hardy ever wrote. Upon its release in 1895 it was vilified by critics as obscene and indecent and as a result Hardy turned himself to poetry and never wrote a single novel again. The story describes a thwarted love story between two unmarried people, Jude Foley and Sue, two emotionally intelligent and sensitive characters. In the plot, their career ambitions are crushed by the inflexibility of Victorian society and their love is denied, making it one of the most depressing novels Thomas Hardy ever wrote. The character of Jude grows up in an obscure village in Berkshire known as Mary Green. He dreams of becoming a scholar at Christminster, Hardy's name for Oxford, and one day he climbs on top of a dilapidated barn called the Brown House to see Christminster's hallowed spires. However, when Jude is trapped into an unsuitable marriage with the common and voluptuous Arabella, his dreams are thwarted. Like in all Hardy's books, his locations are based on real places. It is easy to see that Christminster is supposed to be Oxford. The clue for Jude's home village is in his surname, Jude Forley. Mary Green is therefore Forley in Berkshire whilst Arabella's home village of Crescombe is in Letcombe Bassett. In this video, we are going to attempt to find the original cottage lived in by Jude the Obscure, the barn from which Jude spotted Christminster's spires, and finally the cottage where Arabella lived in Letcombe Bassett. So we are going to go and visit the village of Forley, walking from here, and we're going to stop off at interesting places on the way, and it should be a really interesting uh, walk. I stopped here at East Shefford because in the Church of St. Thomas there is a true treasure of old medieval England and I want to go and see it now, but you guys will have to wait till the end. Let's get going. So because the um, car park at the church was primarily just for people going to visit the church, I decided to drive down to Great Shefford and we'll start the walk here. And so here in this graveyard I'll show us the route. But first of all we're going to have a look at this beautiful church. This is the only round towered church in the whole of Berkshire, so it's very special indeed. Look at that. East Shefford. Didn't do much. They are still concerned about COVID safety. It's a shame because I'd love to get up there. It's a beautiful, beautiful Victorian statue. So here's the plan. We're at uh, Great Shefford here in Berkshire, and you can see we're at St. Mary's Church just there. I've just driven up from East Shefford, which is just there. So that's where we saw the first church. But we're going to start here. We're going to go down this track, and that track here, and go along Lambourne Valley Way, without seeing the uh, Lambourne River. And then we'll go down to the side of Great Shefford, here and then this is when 
I'll go up along here and follow the road up, across this field, to this farm. You see we'll go past this little copse of woodland, and then we'll go up this footpath to Watcombe, where there is a medieval village site, so a deserted medieval village just there. And so we'll have a look at that, so that should be interesting with this uh, strange Holloway got a nun's wall, which I don't know what it looks like, but I'm hoping that'll be quite a very nice old English looking Holloway. And we go up here, and we go off the map, and so we're going into South Forley here. And then I thought I'd just take up this footpath up here to go to Forley to see the location of Mary Green in Thomas Hardy's book, Jude the Obscure. So I set off on my journey to find a place from a book through golden Oxfordshire cornfields to the sound of Skylax and over rolling North Wessex hills. It was truly hardy country. It's only when you go on uh, walks like this where you're going on obscure kind of footpaths through the, through the fields and things where you manage to see wildlife like hares and stuff. Uh, they're such elusive creatures and so uh, clever and uh, cunning. They always stay out of humans' way. But um, yeah, nature always rewards you if you go off the beaten track. So down there is supposed to be the deserted medieval village of Watcombe. There's not really much you can see on the surface other than a few undulating bumps. It's now a famous stud farm, is uh, Watcombe. But um, the village probably wasn't abandoned in the, due to the Black Death or anything like that. It was probably just through uh, the times from uh, the enclosure of the lands when, when um, private ownership of the fields became more common and there was no more common land for people to use anymore, which meant that people were ousted out of their home villages and things. And so it was surely these tiny little villages couldn't survive any longer. But well, hopefully we'll be able to see some evidence of it. There might be just some bumps just there of old house platforms. It's not very clear. So there you go, you can just make out how in one section of the field it's, you've got those uh, a little divot with lots of nettles in and that'll be caused by uh, nitrates in the soil and things, possibly from rubbish dumps in the Middle Ages. And you'll see that there's two furrows or maybe platforms just there, just just in front of that paddock, undulating over. And those are possibly the either platforms of the tofts or crofts. Roasting out here today, oh. and uh, 
I really wanted to just jump in that pond as I showed you earlier at Mokkum. Um, now I'm heading up over and once I get to a water tower, it's going to change over maps. So I just stumbled upon one of the monuments I wanted to show you on this route literally accidentally as well because I just fell out onto this lane from this really overgrown footpath and uh, stumbled over it which is quite fun but uh, it's a, a Jacobean manor house uh, built in 1614 by Sir Francis Moore and Sir Francis Moore is quite an interesting character because he was an MP in Jacobean England and some people believe that he was a witness to the activities of a gunpowder plot and so he actually recorded that he saw um, Percy one of the uh, conspirators in the gunpowder plot going back and forth to Parliament getting up to uh, strange interesting things and it's, uh, it adds more credence to the conspiracy that the government actually, actually knew, already knew that the gunpowder plot was going on but let it go ahead so that they could eliminate these uh, troublesome Catholic rivals that they had in Parliament. But pretty beautiful isn't it? Uh, it's a uh, three storey high, just simply rectangular and a very unusual little Elizabethan to Jacobean building just nestled into the countryside and with a link to English history as well. some cabbage mixture in this little field. I'm almost out of there now, I'm almost at Boyle and I've just been thinking about uh, giving a little life update because I haven't updated you guys on what I've been up to for a while. And basically um, me and Rachel have been having a few little holidays away. I went to Brecon Beacons and I went to Exmoor as well for a little bit. And I also went to Dorset as well, which is when I read Jude the Obscure. And so we've been having a few um, holidays away, trying to use up the holiday time. But my job, I work weekends a lot of the time now, because I um, I used to just deal with doing uh, learning kind of activities for schools and things in the museum I work at. But now with the redundancies, I've been um, turned into a family's officer as well, so... Uh, so organising uh, events that will take place on weekends and things and running them so it's uh, a lot of my weekends get taken up which is why Rachel isn't with me today on this like, little walk because this is a weekday I really needed a rest <laughs> as, I, as I'm boiling going up, to that, going up that hill as, uh, amongst all these wheat fields I've just been sweltering and sweating my head off. I sent a photo to Rachel and my face is completely bright red. And um, I'm so glad that I found this like, little hedgerow that I could uh, shelter under and have lunch. But we're almost there now. We're almost at Jude Fawley's uh, hometown. The town of Fawley, or known as Merry Green in the books. And um, yeah, so I just thought that it was quite interesting that the locations were kind of so close to me. It's only an, it's only an hour or less than an hour's drive away from where I live, around Maidenhead area. And I thought I would go and visit the uh, actual locations of what um, Hardy was inspired by, because when we get to Forley, Forley itself is, was the home of his grandmother, and he set it there because, uh, although all these places look idyllic and beautiful, and things, it was to live there in Victorian times, in rural, in uh, the rural countryside, was really hard, it was really difficult. And so his grandmother had like a really, really hard life. And um, for the itself, there's a, a saying that uh, you will not die in comfort if you lie on a pigeon feather pillow or something. And so there's a legend that there's an old woman who was dying a very uncomfortable death in her bed. 
and then one of the neighbours realised that she had pigeon feathers in, her, feathers in her pillow and so took them out and then she was able to die more soundly apparently. But uh, yeah, apparently it was quite a hard place to live and very povertous and so Hardy chose that as kind of the, the dead end kind of a place for Jude to uh, want to escape from in his uh, trials. Jude the Obscure, or known as Folly. The well stood nearly in the centre of the little village, or rather hamlet of Mary Green. It was as old fashioned as it was small, and it rested in the lap of an undulating upland adjoining the North Wessex Downs. Old as it was, however, the well shaft was probably the only relic of the local history that remained absolutely unchanged. Many of the thatched cottages and dormer dwelling houses had been pulled down of late years and many trees felled back on the green. Above all, the original church, hump-backed, wood-turreted and quaintly hipped, had been taken down and either cracked up into heaps of road metal in the lane or utilised as a pigsty walls, garden seats, guardstones, defences and rockeries in the flower beds of the neighbourhood. In place of it, a tall new building of modern Gothic design, unfamiliar to English eyes, had been erected on a new piece of ground by a certain obliterator of historic records who had run down from London and back in a day. Well, there's certainly quite a few candidates for Red House, and I'm really not so sure which one is the right one. But uh, there's an old Victorian photograph that I'll share just here, which I took from this good uh, blog. But, um, None of them look kind of like it. I've got a picture on another website that I was going on, which also which shows that social club, but I'm not so sure whether that's supposed to be the Red House or not. But, um, but yeah, anyway, at least I've been to Forley and I've seen where Jude Obscure was set. It's apparently a hard place to live in the Victorian times, and now it seems quite a quiet and gentle place. So just by sheer luck, I bumped into the owner of the Red House, Jude Cottage, as it's called now. And so the owner was telling me that uh, she had no idea that this house was featured in the Thomas Hardy novel when she bought it. And, uh, but now then she apparently uh, gets used to get random Americans knocking on her door, coming to see it. And apparently I'm the first lunatic who's come to seek her out for a long time. But yeah, apparently all the... All the uh, cottage rows and things have all got old ancient wells in them and hers has got a well as well uh, from the days and she said that the house dates back to around 1650 really ancient, true old England Bring on that water will ya, you? you idle young harlequin It came from an old woman who had emerged from her door towards the garden gate of a green thatched cottage not far off Slender as was Jude Foley's frame, he bore the two brimming house buckets of water to the cottage without resting. Over the door was a little rectangular piece of blue board on which was painted in yellow letters, Drusilla Foley, Baker. Within the little lead panes of the window, this being one of the few old houses left, were five bottles of sweets and three buns on a plate of the willow pattern. There we go, mission accomplished. I found the Jude Cottage. I have seen various locations in Jude Obscure. So now I just have to hike it back.
Mm-hmm.